It looks like the multitudes are here this morning. We're here. But I'm glad you're here. The good news is multitudes will watch this, and that's the main thing. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And we're going to do another, the second, the second deal in our seminar on prayer today. So you'll be glad you're here. See, the, when you when you start talking about things like prayer, you find out who the Christians really are, right? I'm just kidding. It's supposed to be a joke, but you know, I guess you're not in that kind of mood. Anyway, be seated. We're going to do two sessions, unless the Holy Spirit. Uh, moves me differently. Two sessions. So I'll do one and then we'll, we'll, we'll take a little break. We'll receive an offering and do the next one. Is that okay? Yeah. Well, we have to be out of here by 1230 at the latest. And actually before that. So just remember that. Uh, how many brought your Bibles? Got your Bibles? Yeah. By the way, uh, we had some folks here last week who did not know that we are here every week. We'll be here. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, how long will we stay? As long as the Lord wants us to stay here. Amen. And so, uh, you know, you say, is this a church? Yeah, but no. What I'm, do I'm doing is, is we're just having a training center right now. We'll see how it goes. But um, I want to spread the word on this. Uh, we need to do some advertising. A lot of people should be here. It surprises me. But you know what? Praise God for you. Amen. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. We're going to start there. Now prayer, last week I, I started sharing with you that prayer uh, can change a nation. It can change, it can change everything. we got to have, yes. we have to have people that are willing to pray. Yes. Now, this, this last week, I was watching a TV show, Christian TV show, where somebody interviewed uh, one of these uh, prophet guys. I think it was Rick Joyner. Anyway, in the interview, Rick had a dream. And in the dream, God showed him the history of America uh, from God's perspective. And it was really interesting because how many know God sees things differently than we do? Yeah. But anyway, he started at the beginning of America and showed him. And he, and he walked him all the way through to where we are today and then the future. And it was really exciting because we're at a really p a great pivotal point. And we're going to win this thing. Everybody amen. say amen. amen. However, it's going to take a lot of prayer to do so. Because God works through prayer. If we don't pray, He won't move. If we pray, He will move. Amen. And, and it's also important the way we pray, the type of prayer we use, and the different things. So this is why I'm doing this. Because Green Bay and Wisconsin and Door County where we're at and so on we really need about 150 to 250 really strong prayer people that's right, that's right. you can do a lot with one person praying but when you get a couple two or two or three hundred people praying really strong praying and doing it every day you can change things quickly amen and so this is kind of our goal so I am going to do my part I know that Pastor Bev and others are doing their part but we need prayer people. So this is important today. Even if, it, if one person gets a hold of what I'm talking about. If I can just get one. Now in Reno, we have, we have young people get a hold of this stuff. And they changed. They changed a lot of things. It was powerful to go to church there. Because you never knew it was going to happen. And last week in Sturgeon Bay, we had more testimonies of healing and deliverance than any other time we have since we've been up here. Hallelujah. And we're talking about cool stuff like deaf ears being open. Yeah. You know, I like that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it was it was really, we can see God starting to do it. And that's the reason for that is we're praying. Come on, everybody, somebody's praying. Some of you guys are praying. So anyway, in his, in his uh, dream, when he got to this point, he said, we're going to have a civil war. Remember the civil war? Yeah. It's going to be a civil war in America. We're in a civil war. Have you noticed that? The civil war is, is spiritual, but it's political. It's completely divided. It's like the north against the south. It's, it, it's the civil war is going on. Yeah. And, and uh, the enemy, of course, is overstating his hand. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really laughing about some of these people that are going to run for office. I, I think, I think, man, that's comic relief. That'll be great all year for that. But um, th this year, there will be an exposure of what's really been going on. 
I, I told you this already, and I'm telling you right now, this will not be an easy year to deal with some of the stuff we're going to hear. Because, you know, it's the enemy tried to turn it around, point it one way, but now it's been pointed, turned around, and pointed the other way. And now it's really going to come out what's been happening. It's going to shock people. And there's going to be no way out of it. There's no way out of it because they, they put themselves in that position. The enemy put himself in that position. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to pray, he said. We're going to have an army that's going to rise up and pray this thing through. There will be even riots in the streets in big cities and things like that are going to happen but hallelujah america will become great america will literally we will begin to see the change in america and america will change dramatically that's the way he said dramatically even some of the laws that we passed recently will be reversed this is going to be intense because, it, boy, it'll raise hell. Every time you do, they do that, you're going to scream bloody murder. But it's going to get to the point to where people don't want that anymore. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, how's that going to happen? Everybody say prayer. prayer. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 2. Hello, Michael. Where's Amanda? Is she here too? Okay, you tell her, hurry up and get back in here. <laughs> Verse 1. I exhort you, therefore, that first of all, everybody say, first of all, there she is, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Now, I hear a lot of people teach this, and they always point out, see, you're supposed to pray first for your leaders. That's not what it says. It says, it says, giving a thanks be made for all men. All men need prayer. However, it does state in verse 2, for kings and all those that are in authority. Why? Because when we pray the way we should be for kings and all that are in authority, we will begin to lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. We'll be able to do that. Right now we can't do that because Christians are being attacked. They're under attack. The moralities are under attack. The way we believe is under attack. And everything we do is under attack. They'll attack you on Facebook. They'll attack you on Twitter. They'll attack you everywhere. They'll attack you on the news. They'll attack you everywhere. And that voice of the devil's out there. But let him attack. It ain't going to work. We're going to turn it around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Now, verse 3, notice this. For this is good. Everybody say, this is good. This is good. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Verse 4, who will have all men to be saved. It is God's will for all men to be saved. How many know they won't be, but it's His will for them to be. He provided it for them. But we're going to have to pray Him in. Now, the next part is important too. Amen? And to come under the knowledge of the truth. It's not enough for people in Green Bay to get born again and sit in churches and never learn anything. It is, it, God wants these people in this area to come in to his knowledge. It's the same way up in Sturgeon Bay. No state in the nation is more dense, spiritually speaking, I don't think, than Minnesota, North Dakota, and Wisconsin. Now, it's not you guys. But the major majority of the Christians, now don't look at me in that tone of voice. I know you don't like that statement, but I'm just telling you what the truth is. When I came up here, I could not believe what the, these Christians were like. To get them to bring their Bible to church took me two years to crank and yank. I mean, it was like we are set in our ways. This is the way we've always done it. This is the way grandma did it and mama did it. And we're going to do it too. And you're going to change us. And I said, I can't. But God can. But we're going to have to pray. Now we have a specific group of people, and not just our churches, but other churches that are springing up in this area that have a little bit more get up and go. And they are, praise God, there are people that are getting hungrier by the minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see that? You see what I'm saying? What is that? It is us praying and beginning to prevail. Now, we're right at the time now to where we're about ready to push things through. This is why God had me, has me doing this. Because you guys that are sitting here, right here, and the other ones that maybe aren't here today that will listen to me, you are important. Yes. Amen. 
you have great authority with God. You have more authority with God than any prophet in the Old Testament. Right. Look at Matthew chapter 11. I'll get that in while we're sitting here. To make sure everybody understands something. We have a better covenant based upon better things than any, anything in the Old Covenant. Jesus said it this way. Now, how many know when you read through the Old Testament, there's some heavy duty stuff. I mean, you've got Abraham and Moses and you've got, you know, Ezekiel and Jeremiah. And you read this stuff and some of this stuff is wild. You know, Moses splitting the Red Sea and then you got Ezekiel doing things he didn't. And then you got, you know, Elisha and Elijah and all the stories about what happened in the Old Testament. But let me tell you something. As good as that was, as awesome as those guys were, they didn't have the covenant we have. Not one of those people were born of God. They had the Spirit of God that came on them, but not in them. We have the capacity now to have Almighty God living on the inside of us. One of us, praise God, is a majority. Just one of us is a majority because we have Almighty God living on the inside of us. Think about that. So here in Matthew chapter 11, in verse, verse uh, 11, verse 11, Matthew 11, 11, Jesus makes a comment about something that I want you to see. He says, truly I say unto you, and that's, everybody say, that means me. Amen. Among them that are born of women. Yes. Now, how many here have been born of women? Yes. I imagine you were probably born of a woman. <laughs> Unless you're Damien in the Omen, who was born of a jackal. <laughs> that was a creepy movie, by the way. I tell you what, you ever see that movie? Don't raise your hand if you saw it. Somebody might think you're unspiritual. I saw one last, I saw one last night that was pretty as much as about well, almost creepier now. Okay. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater... Somebody that has more influence. That word means somebody who influ has influence with God and man. Greater. Mega. There has not risen a greater one than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than him. So what he's saying is, he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist, who is the greatest of all prophets. Wow. Who had the most influence with God. The greatest influence with God and man up to that time until Jesus came. And he says today, it doesn't make any difference who you are. You might be the weakest, smallest saint. Might not even know anything yet. But you have the potential to have more effect than any prophet in the Old Testament had. Wow. Amen. That's awesome. Amen. Come on. You, my friend, have been born again. You, my friend, are a son of God. You, my friend, praise God, are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You, my friend, are a king and a priest unto God. You, my friend, are separated, called, separated out. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are anointed of God. That scares the devil when you begin to proclaim these things. It puts shudders in demons. Demons can't handle it when people find out, praise God, that they are anointed. They're not just dirty old wimpy sinners out here, barely getting along, hanging on till heaven. No, we, praise God, are an army of righteous people that have the weapons of the warfare, praise God, of God, and we're going forth, and we're going to have the anointing on us and understand stuff greater than any generation in history. Come on. Amen. When I can get on a phone, like I'm going to do May 7th, or a, a computer and preach to thousands of people, and thousands of people will get saved, and then have all kind of New, New Testament miracles over a, over a phone on Skype. Over 60,000 people have been saved. Think about that. We're living in times where the potential is absolutely amazing. As an example, myself, if I had the money, I could preach to more people in one shot than the Apostle Paul did in his entire life. Easy. I could preach to more people than Billy Graham did his entire ministry with one shot. This is the time we're in. Yeah. 
This is the time that God had spoken of. This is the time that the prophets had spoken of. This is the time that Daniel said, seal up the book till the time of the end, and then I'm going to reveal some things. And he is revealing some stuff to us now. It could not happen. Jesus could not come back any time in history except now. Everything that needs to happen has been set up. Isn't that scary? Scary good, isn't it? He could come back today. Literally. Oh man, I'm going to preach a seminar on the, on the last days and the rapture and all that. There's some things about this rapture stuff people don't, don't understand. And the way they preach the book of Revelations, my God, yeah. it's like, whoa, the beast. It's all about the beast. No, it's not about the beast. It's about Jesus. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. And it's a revelation of what he's going to do when he gets his shot. And everybody, everybody's made their decision. And he's going to come down here with us. It's really exciting because we're going to be with him. Did you know that? We're going to be with him. At least I will be. I don't know about you guys. Some of you maybe want to be uh, mid or post tribulation people. You'll be waiting around, but I, I'm going to be up there, right? And then I, and all that rapture, that's a bunch of ho ho. I hear this all the time now. I'm going to rip that out of. I'm going to. I'm going to rip that apart to the point to where people who don't believe in the rapture are going to feel stupid. Amen. No, there's no such thing as the word rapture in the Bible. Wrong. They didn't believe that. Nobody believed that till that woman in whatever it was here uh, in the 1940s or whatever had that vision. Wrong. The, the pre-tribulation rapture was believed by the early church and all the church fathers all the way up till now. There's a lot of disinformation out there. I just thought I'd say that just for the sake of people. And then, you know, I got 5,000 people on my deal now again, so it'll trim down, I'm sure. <laughs> That should trim them. That'll trim the, the no rapture people out of my deal. All right, here we go. Now, so we have authority, but we've got to learn to pray correctly, guys. That's right. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. Now, last week, how many enjoyed that last week? I got to the very first part of this. There are specific things that the Apostle Paul wrote about in his epistles that we should pray for. He prayed for because the church needs these prayers. You need to pray this for yourself and for other Christians and for the world out here, your friends and your family every single day. These are some of the most powerful prayers. This is what people need. And he knew that the Spirit of God gave it to him. So in Ephesians chapter 1, he gives us the first one. And I must have ate salami or something because these pages are sticking together here when I was doing this. I don't know, man. I don't eat salami anymore. That's right. Don't tell my wife, but I didn't eat salami. Verse 15. Are you, are you ready for this? Are you ready? Are you sure? Okay. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I do not cease to give thanks for you. I do not cease to do this. Paul said, I do it every day. I don't cease to do this. This is something that's part of my practical everyday experience. That must be important. So we catch that right off, right? I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. He remembered them, the Ephesian church, as well as all other churches, in his prayers. What did he remember to pray for? Always, verse 17, I always pray, what? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. What we need in Green Bay and Wisconsin is a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Because we haven't had that, we've had a spirit of religious tradition for years and years and years. He says we need a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Jesus said, I will build my church on revelation knowledge. The rock, Jesus Christ, revelation knowledge. And he says the, the, even the devil and even the gates of hell will not prevail against the church that's built on revelation knowledge. Jesus never said that the gates of hell wouldn't prevail against people who built their lives on religious tradition and nonsense. I see people getting smacked around by the devil like a ping pong ball. 
Yeah. Right. Just smacked around like a ping pong ball, like 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 shooting pool. Boom. Shh. Because they don't know anything, they don't have any wisdom, they don't have any revelation how to take the Word of God and knock the devil upside the head with it. Yeah. We need a group of people that can wield the sword, my dear brother and sister. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, this is pretty easy to preach today. You want to preach for a while? <laughs> He grant us a spirit of wisdom and revelation that gives you a deep and personal and intimate insight. You need a deep, you need a personal, and you need an intimate insight. Amen. Yeah. Into the true knowledge. Everybody say true knowledge. True knowledge. Yeah, here's the deal. Again, he speaks of true knowledge. Not some form of philosophy, not somebody's opinion, not what Pastor Tom's opinion is. I could give a flying flip what my opinion is, and I can give a flying flip what your opinion is. And somebody told me the other day, well, we're all entitled to our opinion. No, Christians are not entitled to opinion at all, except God's opinion. We're not entitled to our own opinion. Are you out of your mind? You see, some, some people say some of the strangest things i ever heard. As Christians, we have one opinion. That's his. His opinion rules and reigns supreme. Yeah, but you know what? That's not politically correct. His opinion rules and reigns supreme. Right? It's not never been politically correct. It wasn't politically correct in Paul's day. It wasn't politically correct in the early church's day. Half of them got, you know, sawn in half over that. But God's opinion still reigns. Let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. So we proclaim it boldly. We proclaim it strongly. Even if we get banned on Facebook. <laughs> now, how could how could a a, a a a video on angels be offensive? That's what they told me. Uh, that that that's not up to our community standard. So, if I talk about angels, that's not up to your community standard. If I talked about some kind of perverted thing, you let it right on there. This is where people are. It's just a computer that's been programmed to pick on people. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we just pray and bind that thing and, and in Jesus' name. And we keep plugging forward and go forward and not let it intimidate us. Come on, everybody. He says, he gives you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that gives you a deep and personal and intimate insight. God wants us to have a deep and personal and intimate insight. And God wants us to have a deep and personal and intimate, are y'all out there? Relationship with him. Yes into the true knowledge of him for we know the father through the son now then he goes on and says some other things oh don't you love this I'm, I'm, I'm giving this to you out of the Amplified Bible I think this this Amplified Bible here is pretty good I might have to use the old one that Bella has verse 18 and I pray that the eyes now this is what we need to pray for I pray that the eyes of your heart Amen. yes the very center and core of your being, your spirit and your soul may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit. That needs to be prayed for you and the body of Christ every day. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that you will know. Everybody say, I'm supposed to know something. See, Paul, Paul knew because he dealt with Christians. Paul was a pastor a long time. He, he, he did churches. And he knew and found this out. I've been doing it now 42 years. You know, you know, um, Easter was my spiritual birthday. Me and my wife, both. Yeah, because I had to pick a day. Because I don't remember. <laughs> it was somewhere around there because I went to a uh, sunrise service. My first sunrise service. I remember getting my heart to the Lord. So I, I just picked that out. But 42 years of working with church people tells me that is vital that we get our hearts flooded with light. Yes. So that you will know and cherish and hope the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you. Yeah. The riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, God's people. We need to know that. Yes. 
We need to know what our inheritance is. We need to know what our rights and privileges are. We need to know who we are in Christ. We got to know that, man. If we don't know that, we're not going to make it good. This is evil times. When evil times, man, we need to be stronger than those evil times. When a spirit is strong, when the world's spirit is strong, we have to build ourselves up so that we're stronger than that. Yes, amen. You can't allow things to dictate to us. Right. We must dictate to them. Yes. We must be strong enough not to allow the winds yes. that are blowing and all the things that are happening in our lives. How many here have been attacked? Yeah. Well, I stand here to tell you we will get through it. And I'm here, stand here to tell you, we will get through it with victory. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, you hang out here long enough, you're liable to get more than victory. Amen. Because you're going to be strong. Amen. You're going to be strong. And we need strong people. We need strong preachers. We need strong pastors. We need people that have an absolute backbone of steel. That's right. Yes. We need leaders to stand up. Yes. This is one of the reasons people don't like our president. Because he's a leader. Right. Yeah. Scares them. Do you know what he said? Did you see some of the tweets last week? I tell you what, I can't believe. I can't believe this guy, as the President of the United States, says some of the things he said. He's just not a politician. They don't care. He's, you know, he's here tonight. Yes. Oh, big controversy. You know, you wear a hat and they, 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 they cuss you out and everything. Don't want to be doing that to me. I have a gun. <laughs> If the angel don't work, I got a 38 special. That'll work. A little backup plan there. Angel took a day off, 38 special's always working. <laughs> that's, that's terrible. What a thing for a man of God to say. Verse 19. And so that you will begin to know what the immeasurable. Everybody say immeasurable. immeasurable. The reason it's immeasurable is because God is immeasurable. Yeah. Somebody says, well, someday we'll understand everything. I go, are you out of your mind? <laughs> We're never going to know everything. And when we think we do, God will just create more. I mean, we're going to be out there billions of years. You know, I could go over to Sabella's house up in heaven, or we'll be down the earth, where we're at at the time. We'll be back down here for a while. New heaven, new earth. So I go over to her house, and I could have tea at her house for a billion years. <laughs> and it wouldn't even be a dent. Yeah, wow. These things are real. This is, I'm, how many here have a loved one that you really didn't get to know as much as you would have liked to? Things were left, there's unresolved issues. Yeah. Like with my father. Now when I get to heaven, I'll be able to spend as much time. And the Lord told me this. He says, for those who have received me, when you get there, everything that you would have done in your relationship, you will do it. Isn't that awesome? Think about that. It's immeasurable. So he says, you know what we need? We need an amplified Bible that's like super giant print. Yeah. <laughs> Write that down. Let's pray about that today. The Bible might be this big, but it, it'll work. And so that you will begin to know what the immeasurable and unlimited, everybody say unlimited, and surpassing greatness of his active spiritual power is in us who believe. We need to pray this every day. These are in accordance with the working of his mighty strength which he pro produced in Christ when he raised him from the dead. When Jesus got raised from the dead, see, the, you know, this Easter thing, Jesus was raised from the dead. Yeah, but we need to put an emphasis on the power that was in that. Yeah. There has never been anything like it. The sun doesn't have that kind of power. Right. Nothing in the universe has that kind of power. Atom bombs, nitro neutron bombs, all that, they don't have that kind of power. When Jesus raised from the dead, every demon in hell, every principality, every, they all knew they had to try to hold him down, that he could not get out of that grave. And they tried it, and he just blasted them right, boom, right through them. 
blasted right through him. He made a show of him openly. I mean, just went up, boom. It was like it was like Jim Brown with a with a football. He just he just mowed over people. See, most of you guys are too too young to even know who he is. But he mowed over people. I mean, he was like a, he was like a man amongst little kids. He just go, get out of my way. Which he reproached in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Now notice this. And seated him. He raised him from the dead. And what? Seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places. How many know Jesus has been seated in God's right hand in heavenly places? Isn't that awesome? It's awesome that Jesus Christ has been raised to sit in heavenly places. You know what's even more exciting? That you have too. Verse 21. Far above. Far above. What does it mean to be far above to God? Wow. <laughs> far, far above. We need to pray this. People need to know this. Yes. Sitting in that little thing tomorrow, in that little church service tomorrow, they're going to talk about a homily, about, you know, whatever it is, and, and a little, you know, Reader's yeah. Digest poem. <laughs> then they're all going to go out and eat at the buffet. <laughs> and it's always us Pentecostal and full gospel people who get there last. <laughs> Because our services last longer than most people's services the whole day, you know. Far above. Everybody say far above. Far above. All rule. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, now when he says that, don't let that, don't let that buy it. All rule. What does that mean? That means everything. Politics. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. See, this is the thing about the body of Christ. We just have to live so low. But, <coughs> but for years, <coughs> excuse me, for years, we were told in the church that you can't get involved in that stuff because it's dirty. Yeah. It's worldly to be get involved in politics. No, what we should have done is we should have took it over. Right, we should have never got out of office. Yeah. Now the witches took it over. Yeah. Yeah. You mean we have witches in office? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Who are they? Well, I could probably tell you. Just look at the House of Representatives. That's like one gigantic witch coven. Now, don't sit there and point fingers at me. Well, you know, that, that, that is, you're talking about the Democratic Party. No, I'm not. I'm talking about the Communist Party. The Socialist Party. But let's take the Republican Party. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. those rascals, some of them are just as bad. Yeah, that's right. And some of them, I don't like them at all. Yeah. You know, the reason I don't like them more than I don't like the other guys, the other guys don't, you know, they do their thing. At least they, they, they do their thing. They, they're out there where you can tell. Yeah. But these guys over here, yeah. they, they pretend yeah. like they. Yeah. God knows. Yeah. And that makes me mad. Yes. Yeah. Makes me mad. Because you see, being a hypocrite is the worst thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, whether angelic or human. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Whether angelic or human. Awesome. Whether principalities and. Well, yeah, but you see, Green Bay's got a big devil. Yeah, but we got a bigger God. Amen. Amen. Yes. When it comes when it comes to God, the devil is a BB among basketballs, folks. There's no, there's no. It's not like the devil's up there going, "I resist you, God." No. No. He might try to do that to you. He don't do it to me for long because he, you know, he knows. Well, you know, if I do that, I'm going to get. He's going to. He's all of a sudden he's going to turn on me. Yeah. And attack me like a wild dog. And then after he's done, I'll be dispatched somewhere. And I, I tell him all the time, I want Jackie to be so well trained. When she gets up in the morning, the demons of hell that have been assigned to her feel like they're being punished. Yes. Amen. Seriously. Yeah. I want you guys to be so strong yeah. Yeah. that when you get up in the morning, in fact, in hell where they, make, they, they pass out the assignments, we ought to be the church they are sent to when they're bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to be punished. Yeah. You got to go up there to that group in Green Bay. 
you got to go to that group in Sturgeon Bay. Oh, no! <laughs> you know. You've been a bad demon. That's your torture. Amen. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, whether angelic or human. And far above. Everybody say far above. Far above. Every name. Yes. Yes. Okay, now, whether the, either this stuff is true or it's not. Right. Every name. Well, what, what does that mean? Every name. Every. Above every title that can be confirmed. Every name. Who has more authority? You. Well, I can't really say it that this way because our president is a Christian. Who has more authority, though? You or a congressman, a heathen congressman? You do. That's right. Not even on the same page. No, that's right. Who has more, who's more important in a community? A pastor or a mayor? Pastor. Pastor is far more important. Not even on the same page. God doesn't even look at it that way. Now, God respects leadership, and we are too, but I'm just telling you, that's not. Let me tell you what, though. It doesn't matter what kind of name it is. His name is far above that name. And listen to this. That could be a name called cancer, heart disease, diabetes. I don't care what it is, praise God. Whatever is attacking you, that name, that that name is, his name is better than that name, stronger than that name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's not a fantasy land. That's not some pie in the sky thing. I said, that is an absolute truth. Man, I don't tell you what, you guys are easy to preach to. And it's hotter than the... I must have turned that sucker up too high. Somebody else ought better do that because that's not good with me. Maybe I shouldn't be. I'm putting it on the wrong thing. My, I, sw I just sweated so much, I think I lost a pound. This is great. This is great. Okay. Verse 22, I know what I can do. I can wear those, what do you call those, those, uh, those uh, things we used to do in wrestling? <laughs> no, no, underneath, you know, the, the, the plastics where you put them on so that you, you sweat. I could, put, I could wear those to church. <laughs> Man, I, I could drop off some weight. The only problem with that, with, with, with dropping off the, the water weight is it fools you. Wow, I, I lost 15 pounds. No, you didn't. <laughs> I lost 15 pounds, 10 pounds in one football game. <laughs> then I go drink 17 <laughs> deals of Gatorade, Gatorade yeah. and gain it all back, you know. It's deceptive. Some of these diets do that to you. You get on the diet, you flush out all the water. Wow, I'm doing great. And then reality sits in. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Verse 22. And, hath, and he put all things. Everybody say, all things. All now listen things. very carefully to what God says here. And he put all things in every realm. All things in every realm. All things in every realm. In subjection under Christ's feet. All things in every realm. Well, let me ask you a question. What realm did that leave out? There is no realm that is not under his feet. There is no realm that he hasn't dealt with. Well, what is a realm? Well, anything you want it to be. Let's say the realm of Hollywood and entertainment. Let's say the realm of banking. Well, Pastor Tom, don't you know that the Illuminati is going to take everything over? No. No. Church. Amen. No, I do not know that. Yeah. You know why I know? Well, pa did you know that that Antichrist is going to come and take everything over? No. Not while I'm here. Amen. He can't even come on the scene while I'm here. Are you here? Because we have so much authority that we don't understand we have that we hold back. Listen, if it wasn't for people like you praying, the world would be in a position of absolute chaos. Yes. If it wasn't for the Christians praying and being salt and light, see, the world doesn't understand that, but we do. If it wasn't for the Christians praying, people would be shooting each other in the street. It would be massive chaos. It would be a zombie apocalypse. Yes. Because yes. human beings will get so demented they'll bite your face off. 
And don't think you're not capable of it without God. That's right. But while we're here, we hold, we occupy, we hold that stuff back. Now, sure, the Bible says in the last days it's going to get worse and we're going to have these things happen. Yes, but praise God on the other hand, how many know as the, the, the enemy gets, you know, people get darker and start yielding to him, we're going to get stronger and there's going to be this face off kingdom rising against kingdom. I'm telling you, it's intense right now. Yeah. Don't you love it? <laughs> this is what I live for. This is like driving down the, this is like the Packers, well I can't use them anymore. This is like a good team. <laughs> the Patriots. Driving down the field. It's like Tom Brady, you know, if he has that last thing, he's going to get it. They drive down the field and just here and he dumps it over here to this guy and throws it over there to that guy. And this guy's so old he can't even have, hardly have, hold up the, the, the ball anymore. But somehow he does it and they plunk and plick and pluck and pluck and in the last second they win the game. This is what we're like. We are, praise God, that last generation. Come on, everybody. We are, we are the generation that the prophets of old wanted to look at, but couldn't. You are. You are part of the greatest army that's ever been assembled on planet Earth. More influential by far than the early church was. You watch. We're not there yet, but we'll get there. Come on, everybody. Well, I believe that everybody's going to backslide and the church is going to be like Laodicea. You know, that's your brain working. It's like a lot of these crazy prophets. Did you know America is being judged and God is going to destroy America? Now he's not. How do you know? How can you be so sure? Well, the Bible, Abraham got him down there in Sodom and Gomorrah to 10 people. Come on, amen. God will not pour his wrath out on his people. Amen. He never amen. does that. Amen. We are righteous. He looks at us that way. Come on, everybody. Amen. You guys get way too worried. Some of you, some of you guys, you watch the wrong cotton picking videos. Everything is fear, fear, fear. It's going to happen, you know. And did you know that there are, you know, in, that there are aliens among us? Yeah, <laughs> I've known that for years. <laughs> I mean, they come with all this stuff. I mean, it's just fear, fear, fear. Everything's going to blow up. Everything is going to happen. That's going to happen. And, you know, they prophesy. Thus saith the Lord. California is going to, California is going to break off and float out. It's going, to, it's going to sink into the ocean. And I always tell them, watch out. They pray enough out in California. They're liable to just break off and everybody else go down. You didn't get that, did you? California be floating in the breeze while all the rest of us sink. People are, they, 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 it's almost like they want. Yeah. This, it's, their, it's their twisted way of looking at things. Okay. Yeah. Thus saith the Lord, there's going to be an earthquake in California. I predict that. <laughs> I'm a prophet now, man. <laughs> <laughs> you watch, that will come to pass. In fact, it'll happen sometime today. They have one every day there. It's like Japan. They have them all the time. These, some of this stuff. Is, now, if somebody goes, thus saith the Lord, there's going to be an earthquake two weeks from today at 10 o'clock in the morning in a certain city, then you need to listen to them. Yeah. Most likely they got something from God. Come on, everybody. See what I'm saying? General things. You guys get anything out of this? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> all right. Verse 22. And he put all things in every realm in subjection under Christ's feet and appointed him as supreme and authoritarian, head over all things to the church, in the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills and completes all things in all believers. Now, if you would have seen Jesus when he was back walking the shores of Galilee and you were there, it would have freaked you out. There was probably more, more miracles in a day 
in Jesus' ministry than you, ever, you could ever see in a whole lifetime, any preacher. It was absolutely amazing. He very rarely, except where there was unbelief, ever missed a shot. It was completely and total deliverance, complete and total healing, instantaneously most of the time. It was amazing. It was miraculous. It was powerful. And the church has told us for years, that's because he's God manifest in the flesh. And how many know he was? But they told us that's because he could just zap anybody he wanted because he is the son of God, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then what, well, that kind of understanding keeps you from being able to do anything because he's all the way over here and we're down here and we could never do any of that. But the truth of the matter is at the time he did those miracles, he, did, he, he had stripped himself of his divine privileges. Now he's still God, but he stripped himself of his divine privileges and he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he was. And he had to listen to the Father and the Father told him what to do and he did it perfectly. But this is the difference. He was at the time the body of Christ. All in one guy. All the apostles, all the prophets, all the evangelists, all the pastors and teachers and miracle working ministries and everything in Jesus at one time at the highest level ever. Are you listening to me? Yes. Don't lose me here. Yes. No one of us could ever attain that ourselves. And there's a lot of teaching like this. Well, you have the Holy Ghost so you can do all the things Jesus did. We are capable of doing whatever God tells us to do at the time. But we're not going to be like Jesus was exactly all, every one of us. That's bad teaching. And it's, what it's going to do is frustrate people. However, all of us together carry that same anointing so when all of us together begin praise god to operate as the body of christ come on everybody now listen to me when jesus was on the earth at the first time for the first at the earth <clears throat> he was praise god the body of christ but before jesus comes back the second time his body is going to rise to that mature level the bible says so that mature level where we are operating as a body in that kind of power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to be exciting. Yes. I mean, it, it, God can literally take some of us just tomorrow and say, go down there to that hospital and empty that sucker out. <laughs> See, this would, can you imagine how big pharma and the doctors <laughs> would scream? <laughs> yes. Can you imagine the controversy it would be if everybody that came to your healing line got healed of cancer? Can you imagine that? Could you, could you imagine what that would do? It would send shockwaves across the world. <clears throat> and we've had some ministries that have had that kind of anointing where, you know, almost everybody in a certain area will get healed. But what happens when we all begin to understand who we are? And take our place. Boy, this is good preaching. Oh, yeah. Melissa, how much more do I have on this session, would you say? Five minutes? 45 minutes? All right. I'm going to finish with this. Look at chapter 2. How many know Paul didn't go, okay, chapter 2. <laughs> and you. Everybody say, that means me. Amen. See, when they put chapter 2 in, they really screwed it up on that one. Because people stop reading. So let's read verse 23 and then we'll go to chapter 2 verse 1. Which is his body, the fullness of him who fills and completes all things in all believers. Do you see that? Wow. And you. Everybody say, and me. <clears throat> you he made alive when you were spiritually dead and separated from him because of your transgressions and sins. And he goes on and talks about that. But I want you to get down here <clears throat> to verse 4. Notice, but God being so very rich in mercy because of his great and wonderful love which he, with which he loved us, even when we were spiritually dead and separated him because of our sins, he made us, everybody say that means me, spiritually alive together with Christ. When did that happen? In God's mind it happened when Jesus died and rose from the dead. He saw all of us there. And he accounted his victory to us. He accounted the authority he won to us. 
We are joint heirs with Jesus. I don't know if I believe that, but that's your problem. He made us spiritually alive with Christ, for by His grace, His undeserved favor and mercy, <coughs> you have been saved from God's judgment. Now, I want you to get to verse 5, and then we're gonna, or 6, and then we're going to take a five-minute break. Everybody say five minutes. I'm actually going to time it. <coughs> so, after five minutes, I will start again, okay? So, if you have to go to the bathroom, you know, go ahead. There's two bathrooms. You can use either one. I remember when I was back in the old, in the days when I, before I was a Christian, I used to go to rock concerts at Winterland in San Francisco. And we would be in there in the bathroom waiting because everybody was, you know, drinking about like 27 beers. And everybody's waiting. And, and so one, there's inevitably always one hippie. He'd just look around and he said, I can't take it no more and go use a sink. <laughs> Somebody say, sinks are open. You know, then you had four or five of them going there. But we have two, don't use a sink. We have two <laughs> bathrooms. Everybody say amen. <laughs> Five minutes. No pressure. Okay, here we go. Look at verse six. And he raised us up together. Everybody say he raised. He what? When did he do it? When he died. In his mind. Then when he got saved, it became a reality in your life. Should be, right? He raised us up together with him when we believed, right? You understand that? And seated us with him, where? In heavenly places. So, if I'm reading this right, we're in the body of Christ. Even his feet are over all things. So, anybody in the body of Christ is far above in their authority than any principality or power or might or dominion. Hallelujah. So, Paul said, we need to pray. I pray for you every day. Because apparently they didn't have that. They thought they did, maybe. But apparently it hadn't become a reality to them. You know, there's a few of us that, ha that got the reality of this. There was a man back in years past named Smith Wigglesworth. He understood that. A guy named John Lake. He understood that. Some of us are getting the understanding of these things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you're getting the understanding of it. And I'm getting the understanding of it. And Green Bay needs to get the understanding of it. The saints here, the church, a lot of great people. It's not their fault that their leaders have not taught them right. Some of the stuff we got going on in Green Bay, especially amongst the spirit filled people, scares the fire out of me. It's like they're so whacked out. It's like, what the heck was that? <laughs> they don't even know what tongues and interpretation is properly. They want, the, they want the gifts of the spirit to be in operation, but we want the real gifts of the spirit to be in operation. Everybody say amen. amen. So let's pray. Not criticize, but let's pray every single day for all of us to come into that. Well, we got through what we got through last week. I haven't even moved forward yet. <laughs> Gee, man, cricket. What's wrong with me? All right. I'm going to stop here and we'll, we'll, when we get back we'll receive our offering. So, I'm going to I'm going to put my phone on now. Melissa, let's see it is it's a minute after 11. Go. <laughs>